Feel the difference with CBD Direct Oils. CBD oils may have the health benefits for your aches and pains. Welcome to another episode of PDR Tool Time. This is episode 225. I'm your host, Vince D'Alessandro, along with Daniel Gran, Hudson Tanzi, John Renstrom. We're all here to bring you massive content about the PDR industry, tools, reviews, stories, and this episode is going to be a lot of ranting going on. There's going to be a little update on MTE Vegas and see what's going on there. And uh, this is kind of... Uh, 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 a long time coming. It's probably going to be coming in different spurts throughout the next com- couple episodes. We're going to be talking about how to legitimize your business, how to make yourself look more professional, and all that other stuff. So, gentlemen, I'm going to shut up, and you guys are going to talk and tell me how your week was. Yeah, we're coming live from Studio C. Studio C. Where's that? Studio C. No. Couch? <laughs> Studio couch? Yeah. What is... <laughs> I would I would say what I thought the c word was, but oh, oh lord! <laughs> well, there might oh, be lord. there might have been a c word involved with why we're talking about some of the th- stuff we're going to talk about on this episode. <laughs> how's the happy re- attitude? How, how's how's COVID 19, 2020 and all that? Don't I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Um, Update. I, I uh, one of my dealerships. They had six cases in it, so I showed up this week. Mm-hmm. And like everyone's wearing masks. I'm like, and I just like kind of look around. I go, did I miss something? They're like, yeah, they had a lot of people test positive. I'm like, crap. They're like, yeah, if you're not wearing a mask, you, you can't work here right now. I'm like, really? I go, I don't I honestly don't own a mask. I haven't worn one. They're like, well, they have some at the front desk. And that would be another rant that I would have. Okay. Here's my problem with huh. all that. It's like, is anybody dying? Yes. It's like, yeah, people are dying. Yeah, people are dying. Daniel. People are dying. We Come have on. like, we're in the six like the six figure range of people dying no now right now yeah well, if yeah you, people are you're not dying they, oh me am i dying no people when they get it they're not dying there are people that are dying there we don't are fit people into that. that are dying daniel come on we don't I, fit my, into that my, demographic one of my good friend's mother died from it. yeah you're gonna die but you're probably gonna die anyway no. Yes, it, the, the, the pre-existing condition. People with pre-existing conditions are yeah, most of the deaths. Die. Yes, yeah. but my my issue. I don't have. Here, here's the, my. If we get into one really quick rant, and since that's kind of what we're. Well, doing, you've already started. Might we've as well already started. Finish. Yeah, I have no problem wearing a mask if my customer needs me to. I saw a post on there on uh, one of the tool pages or the the dent pages where they were just like. Someone just said, hey, if a customer asked you to wear a mask, would you wear one? Everyone like over one, like, no, I'm not wearing oh. any mask, blah, blah, blah. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up, rewind. <laughs> yeah. That was if a customer came into your shop and yes. asked you to wear a mask. There's a yes. big difference oh, between yeah. that. that. You're is, a mobile yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. If a customer asks you to wear a mask, that's totally different. But where I'm at, I've got a buttload of cars. I've got yeah. an unending amount of crap. I have more work than we want to do, and we're trying to price ourselves out of a lot of it. <laughs> if somebody came through the door being a dick, telling me I need to put a mask on before I work on their car, there's I'll the exit, buddy. Send them down the road. Yeah, yeah. I and I and I guess I take the other the other thing is like I get it. You have um. Oh, sorry. My my daughter has decided to uh, in, get into my. Room. Oh, Ren. Oh. He wants to rant too. Ren uh, wants to rant. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, the is. You know what? Like, if I have to wear a mask, and that means it's a hail, a customer comes in and they have a hail car, and that's a six to eight thousand dollar hail car. Guess what? I'm gonna wear a mask for a day, and I and I'm okay with that. Like, that's sure. a I'll I, you could pay me six thousand dollars wear a mask for a day. I have no sure. problem doing that, right? Uh, I even even like you pay me a hundred bucks to wear a mask for twenty minutes to fix this guy's car. I mean, come on. Like, where where do we draw the line? Sh- Sure. And that's your case, but I've got those same cars booked until like this time next year. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I, I get it. So I, I don't, I, I don't have to care and I don't have to care, but I've not been in a lockdown state. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I'm taking requests. I'm like, Hey, do you need, because I don't know if the person's got cancer or whatever, what their underlining health um, conditions are, you know, sure. so he says he needs to wear a mask. I'm, I'm going to comply. Of course. Um, I'm going to be polite about it. 
Yeah, it's uh, a great course. opportunity to, to extend incredible customer service. Yes. But, I don't even have a mask. But but Daniel, I've been, I've been telling customers, you don't have to wear a mask, and they're like ripping it off. Thank <laughs> God. I don't tell them that. <laughs> I don't tell them that. I, I say, and no one has even questioned me. You know, did some come in with masks, some don't. I clean my house at, or my house, my shop every morning. And with they, if they come in without a mask, I'm perfectly fine with it. I just stay a little bit farther away from them. You know, if they have a mask, maybe I'll get within the six feet, maybe five. Uh, yeah, but, but but Vince, the question is, if if a customer comes in and says, "Hey, I'm really uncomfortable. Can you put on a mask when you're working on my car?" Yeah, I don't know if at I do your it or not. shop. I don't know. I, I would tell them that I take the precautions and clean your vehicle properly prior to me working on it yeah. to protect me, and I'd clean it after I'm done to protect you. Uh, Daniel and me, we both fall into a category where we live with high risk people. So you know, I I'm. I don't. I don't. I take care of myself. I wash my hands constantly. I did it beforehand. I'm a kind of a clean person, yes. you know. Same here. And now I walk around with a really quick uh, bottle of alcohol and have since day one of COVID in my pocket right now. I whip it out and I spray my hands. I spray hey, whatever hey, I touch. Hey, you're whipping it. Out. You whip out your willy. I, I whip out. I whip, whip out the willy. I willy That's a whole nother rant. I, Stop whipping out your willy. I quickly <laughs> willy complaints. willy quickly whip yeah. it out. But but uh, I mean I, I I fall into the camp. You know this is the, just a disclaimer for the show, guys. Is this is an, a, a very opinion driven show? So yes. none of yeah. this is fact or whatever this we're is, not doctors. we're gonna be sharing a lot of our opinions yes and my opinion is i hold the opinion that you know what my business is not a place for me to for to to go and push my politics or my personal beliefs no i'm here to provide a service and if yes. my customer would feel more comfortable that i wear a mask during a pandemic i'm okay providing that for them um in the same sense of when i went to go service a dealership Today. And they asked me, they said, Hey, look, you got to wear a mask. Yeah. Um, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that about politics because I really purposely try to keep politics out of my, my business absolutely. and my posts and everything like that. And I resent companies that bring in politics and religion right now, you know, right now they want to change and Chemima right now. It's like, but they want to change all of it. I don't trust any other. Mo- I want to put some on syrup. my box of pancakes you know what? And, my, and my syrup. Keith Cosentino right. made hey, a post on this they're, today. They're coming for Cracker Barrel next. I'm just letting you know. Keith Cosentino made a post barrel. on this. <laughs> and his thing was, you're removing black pop culture out of pop culture. And I think that's a terrible thing. You know, we all mm-hmm. grew up with Aunt Jemima, Uncle Ben's conver- converted rice or whatever. Yeah. All those. That was part of our lives. I never I thought it was racist, though. I, I don't get it. Because if you look at the history of Aunt Jemima, it goes back to a, um, a lady who was a storyteller and she was an activist and she was a model and they used her so I've heard all, multiple all stories. Things. I've I've heard that story from the conservative side, and then my liberal friends talk about how Aunt Jemima was a caricature of a minstrel blackface character, uh, who is who Aunt Jemima. So I've heard from both sides. Minstrel, Here's not a menstrual. A, min, a what? Minstrel, not That's menstrual. I said. I said <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying the PMS side. I'm saying that whatever. Well, that's All what I, I heard was Here, menstrual. Here's the deal, is we're a bunch of white dudes and white privilege. If, if the black community feels like it's racist, like we should just listen. And I mean, we shouldn't give in to everything, but like it's a good time to listen. And yeah. if they feel that it's a racist here's, thing. And here's, I think some of it they're going to they're going to regret. They're going to regret some of it. The reality is nothing has any meaning except the meaning you give it. And that meaning sure. is the truth for you. I'm trying to figure out where y'all heard the stories about who Aunt Jemima was because I didn't. Yeah, she just sold syrup. I was Same like, oh, that's somebody's face I can no, trust to sell me. No some one, syrup. no it- conservative at all cared about Aunt Jemima's backstory until she got removed, and no, li- no left person on the left exactly. knew anything about the backstory of Aunt Nobody Jemima. Cared. Until they saw a black person. person is that brought it up in the first place. They go, oh, there's there, somebody's complaining. It's I a want, white I dude, to guaranteed. Go to that person and ask why. Yeah. I want to know who that guy is. All of us are coming after Paw Patrol now. They're coming after Paw Patrol now, and I am not oh, that's, happy. That's I, I agree with Vince. This that's is all white people complaining. This is white people problems. <laughs> it's this is white people trying to. This is why I'm cool. not in a city. 
Yeah. And we're diving deep into this one. Oh, man. It, but uh, it's, it's, it's white sorry. people it's trying to prove PBRs. that they're not racist. And what is it, Vince? It's white people trying to prove that they're not racist, and they're trying <laughs> to take care of their black brothers. Hey, we need to remove Aunt Jemima, and, and well, what about Mrs. Butterworth? I mean, I, I think I love she's Mrs. getting Butterworth. removed. She's getting removed as well. Just assume that she's black. I, I always, if you listen to the voice of the original like commercials, yeah, it sounds like a white grandma. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. Grandma sound like grandma. They just sound like love, what? pure love. Um, I'll be 100 percent honest. John is a celiac, and he doesn't eat any of that shit. Well, yeah, but you used to. <laughs> it's, it's been like 20 years. If, you, if okay. you could, you would. Yeah, probably. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. that. That's like a so vegan you, you not wanting to eat bacon. You don't make uh, banana pancakes. Um, no. no, actually, uh, the gluten-free pancake recipe that we have, I don't, my wife's got the recipe now. And it's gross, oh, man. right? Because my wife is gluten intolerant and we take the same, you just take one banana and like one egg and you blend it together and it makes these perfectly crispy little pancakes. That, mm -hmm. that sounds more like a crepe. Yeah. The rabbit hole. Let's not go down there. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Let's go to PDR. Okay. So back okay. to PDR, 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 PDR. Okay. okay. Episode Sheldon. 225. Sheldon. Oh yes. Let's call Mr. Sheldon. Yes. Sheldon, right. you're in and out, man. Am I really? Okay. I'm okay down here. Don't worry yeah, about well, me. As long as it's strong on your end. It's, it's strong on my end. Hours. So, uh, but, All right. Get, go ahead and get di sh dialed up with Sheldon. Yeah. We can start our own own little rants. I, and I'm, that is, dang it, I am buried in hail, and I'm going to be for a very long time. And uh, MTE Vegas, even if it wasn't for COVID screwing it all up, I probably won't be able to go. I am mm. in and out because we are talking all over each other right now quite a bit. So that's what happens when you, we have crosstalk and we talk on top of each other. One of us gets canceled out. It's always Vince. Yeah, I'm glad it's Vince. But you know what? <laughs> it might be Vince on your side, but it's not on my side, which is recording <laughs> it. I hear everything and everything. Get, oh, shoot. I don't want to call him. Uh, everything oh. gets recorded just fine. So just to, to reiterate my rant. My personal opinion is if you've got a shop and you can extend a, a better customer service for someone, take advantage of that. Yeah. Because that's a five-star review waiting to happen. Oh, Do absolutely. what it takes to get the customer in the door. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Sorry. What? What, Vince? I uh, f forgot to connect the Bluetooth to uh, the road system here. Oh, oh my so goodness. So for you, for uh, all uh, you listeners, the new guys that are out there that don't know, because we've had Sheldon on quite a bit in the past. Uh, he is the director of MTE, MTE Vegas, Orlando, doesn't matter. He is the director. He pretty much is the face of MTE now that uh, it's been handed over from uh, Kevin. Kevin just kind of hangs out now and doesn't really make any decisions, but he's still there to help out at, on occasion. And we love Kevin Halewood, and uh, we love Sheldon. He's been very accommodating to us. Hey. And, uh, okay, here we go. He's hey, waiting for Sheldon, sorry about that. I forgot to have the Bluetooth on. <laughs> oh, no worries. How you doing? Good. How about you? Not too bad. You're live. Well, not live. We're pre-recorded, but <laughs> yes. uh, you're on with hey, the, the other boys, Daniel and John hey, everybody. And Hudson. Hello. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of banter going on back and forth and talk and crosstalk and all this stuff about, you know, MT Vegas. Obviously, it's mm -hmm. happening. We've had a lot of requests that, hey, you know, can you guys poke and prod a little bit and find out what it's going to look like if it, it is going to happen? And who better to go to than uh, the director yourself? <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. And um, sorry, I've been kind of silent about it. We've been sort of trying to figure out what we can do and legally do and all that kind of stuff. Sure. But um, everyone will be getting an email tomorrow announcing that, well, I'm not sure when this is going live, but. <laughs> An email will be coming out very soon saying that um, MTV Vegas is happening, but it's going to be a um, one-day education event. We're calling it um, MTV Las Vegas, a day of education and community. Awesome. So th the education day will take place on Saturday, uh, August 29th. And then um, on the 28th, the Friday before, we're going to have like a community networking mixer thing. Gotcha. Somehow, somewhere legally but somehow safely now are you <laughs> are you limited to amount, the amount of people so far i know th things are going to change day to day and you know where you're at right now is there a limited who could come i think it's technically we can have 50 people grouped up 
in a confined space and then any place that has an occupancy rate, you're at 50% of that. Okay. So if we were to go to a bar, it's whatever 50% of their max occupancy is. Gotcha. Okay. So we're really hoping by the end of August that that will be raised considerably. Sure. Because really, we're we're only we're what a little bit halfway through June, and and we got July and August to get through, right? So, well, good. So, Sheldon, is this? It sounds like this thing whole whole thing has been a moving target for you. And I'm sure it's probably yeah. very frustrating. Um, how how do you even get information that to make decisions off of? Well, so we're working with South Point has been a good help. Um, we also produce other shows here in Vegas, actually on a much larger scale. So we work directly with the state legislators to figure out, you know, what they know now, what they are road mapping for the future based on if things get better, like we're all hoping they will. So uh, we actually have a, a very large show in January with about you know, 60,000 people. So based on the knowledge of working on that, we have been able to apply that to NTE in August and I think we can easily accommodate, you know, maybe I'm only expecting maybe two or 300 people to come out. And that's kind of why we're scrapping the exhibit portion. So we can't ask the exhibitors to make that kind of commitment and not see that many people, but we think we can put on some really good education and, you know, the people that can come out and we're going to try to make it as cheap as possible for everyone. Uh, room nights are like $75, I think on Friday and Saturday. So it should be good. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Vince. I, I think that's one of the main points too, is because you know everyone's been kind of tied up and and uh, you know in the whole COVID uh, backlash and not backlash, but you know we're living it right yeah. now. We're living a different lifestyle, and mm -hmm. you know th there's a lot of guys that we have not seen each other in, in since MT Vegas last year or Orlando, and mm -hmm. you know there's there's guys coming. There there are there are technicians coming. And, uh, you know, if anything for the fellowship alone, because, you know, we miss each other and all that. So, uh, right. Yeah. We are going to invite our exhibitors, anyone that's ever exhibited in T, um, I'm just going to offer If you want to come out, it'll just give you a free tabletop space on that education day. Kind of like, you know, in the hallway, like around where everyone's going to be in the lunchroom, stuff like that. So I'm hoping, um, actually we already have some commitments from some tool companies to come out and they might have tools in their van, so you can kind of see a little display of what they might have on the table, and then you can go buy stuff in the parking lot type deal. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, you're, you're regulated to comply with the legislation. Is that correct? Yes. And actually, the education won't be too bad at all because we have so many rooms we can deal with. We, we might have to repeat things. We won't have as many tracks as we normally do because we might have to repeat some sessions because we won't be able to accommodate everyone in the room at one time. But I, I think that portion actually be very manageable. Yeah, and I think that was a wonderful thing uh, about Vegas was the the rooms were right next to it. I mean, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. it, it was great. It was a great setup. In fact, the New Orlando one was an excellent setup. I mean, you, all you had to do is walk around the corner, and you're right there for the rooms. Yeah, yeah. So you've definitely uh, improved on that throughout you know the past. Not that it was terrible in the past, but now it's like it's really convenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're trying our best. If you're not getting educated, there's something wrong with you at that point. You know, <laughs> so you're just there for the party. So what's what's the news on Orlando, and what's what's well? That luckily, with? yeah, Florida's actually opening up at a good rate as well. So that's very that's very good. It, um, it's they're going at a much higher rate than California in terms of like opening up and what phase they're on. So um, I'm really hoping that won't be too much of an issue. But because we really want Orlando to be the same great show that everyone's known for the past what, 20 years now. So we expect full exhibits and everything there. And that will be at the Rosen, right? No, uh, this year it's at the uh, Gaylord, and 21 oh, at the Gaylord right. Palms. That's and then right. hopefully we're yeah. back at the Rosen in 22. Gotcha. And the Gaylord and, Palms is a wonderful place from what everyone has said already. No, yeah, yeah it's absolutely beautiful. And, um, the education's not exactly right next to it, but it's not too far away, so... Yeah, um, we're actually gonna. I think we're gonna do like a drinking tour to make sure everyone knows where things are the first night. So I yeah. have a couple plans for that. That's yeah, and you know it was kind of funny, Sheldon, because you know at, once COVID started coming up, uh, <laughs> everyone's like, "Oh, 
I got sick at MTE, you know, and I'm sure right, you heard right. it. You know, I was one of them too. Daniel got sick. I think Hudson got sick. He was actually the first one that got sick. So there was like, you know, 50 people that we knew that got sick at MTE. Mm-hmm. I went out and got tested for COVID immediately thinking, oh, you know, just to trying to put a, a, a stop on it, that it wasn't COVID. And it wasn't, you know, it was just, yeah. you know, the, the regular convention flu that everyone gets from drinking too much and staying up too late and not taking <laughs> yeah, care of themselves. Yeah. So that's which normally happens at conventions, right? So, yeah, yeah, we see it all the time, but yeah, I'm glad it wasn't COVID though. It wasn't COVID, no. I don't think anyone. There was not one single report of MTE uh, being a COVID incident or anyone coming yeah. down with COVID. At least in the PDR side of it. I don't know about the detail yeah. side. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, and and it's it's a good thing. I. I know for us, we had the, the playground last year, the last uh, two mm-hmm. ones. Obviously, we're not going to be doing that in Vegas right now because we don't want you touching tools, and we're not going to stand around monitoring you and cleaning tools exactly. and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, that's going to be, you know, ixnayed for this year or for Vegas at least. But, you know, and it's I still think it's a wonderful opportunity to fellowship with the guys that are going. There's going to be education there. Uh, make sure – you know, and the, the next part of our segment of our show is actually about education. So I think it's really important okay. that, uh, you know, MTE brings that education to the PDR industry. And we all need to be educating ourselves on whatever it is and bringing ourselves up in this industry. Yep. And that's what we're going to try to do. And um, we're really going to focus the education on, you know, the current world we live in. We're going to have a couple of speakers talking about success stories of how they've made it through this and how they're going to be stronger because of it. And different, you know, maybe not just how to use tools as much as how to grow your business and how to find different ways to have bring in revenue when things are tough and, right. you know, more general stuff like that. So, yeah. Daniel, you have something? It, well, you know, this is a good opportunity. We've been pinned up. We haven't been able to vacation. And this is a good opportunity to go to Las Vegas. And cheap. Cheap. Mm-hmm. And write it off. And bring the whole family, and we have education for one one day. Is that right? One yep. day? Yeah, just one to just Saturday. So it sounds like a perfect uh, getaway vacation with the family, and make the wives happy, and we get to write the whole thing off. Yeah, right, Vince. Yeah. Well, you know what? I <laughs> I had to write off my. Uh, I literally just canceled my European vacation yesterday. So uh, I was supposed to be gone for 16 days to, to Europe, and that is not happening. So I have a whole bunch of ca- travel credits going on. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> so uh, that might be a good opportunity to cash in on some of those. Definitely. Yeah. Well, Sheldon, listen, uh, we appreciate you always coming on, giving us the time of day to uh, talk about your wonderful event. You know we love you, and we love our MTE, have been for years. Oh, we, hold on. Oh, hold on. Someone called me. Hold on, Sheldon. Something <laughs> happened here. Oh. All right. Sorry about that. Did you hear me? Yes. Okay, you're back on. <laughs> I got a phone call in the midst of talking oh. to you. There. <laughs> Forgot to turn that off. Popular guy. All right, man. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for coming on, Sheldon. Yep, thanks, guys. I hope to see you very soon. Absolutely. Thanks, bud. All right. Bye. 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 Perfect. That was right. nine fifty eight. I wanted him. I said, "Hey, give me ten minutes of your time." And that was nine fifty eight. <laughs> so that was perfect. <laughs> Sheldon, you're an awesome dude. He's always bent over backwards for us, and uh, it's a good yeah. match. So if you need that vacation, if you need that time off, you know, go hit Vegas. Uh, everything's going to be super cheap, and as far as I know, everything is pretty much open right now. Have you seen some of the advertising for Vegas? Yeah. I mean, they're giving stuff away. I'm only three hours away from Vegas, but, and it went back to the old days where, like, you're comped everything. Yeah. That hasn't like happened in years. people to come there, so it might be a good little vacay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's super cheap, too. And and that time of year, it's good. It's perfect. It's a little Weather bit warm. warm. It might Not be a little bit hard for some of the hail guys, but it's over yeah, a weekend. They could cut out for a weekend. falling everywhere. Everywhere but Colorado, it seems like. I know, right? <laughs> All right, so yeah, yeah. Oh, hasn't been hit, huh? Now on to our next segment. There's been a lot of stuff that all of us, or some of us, the three of us, maybe four of us, have been reading online about the PDR industry and how we're viewed by other 
uh, industries out there, whether it's the body shop industry or, or uh, I don't know, let's just say the body shop industry, right? Let's just stick with that sure. one. The, they're a prime example. Yeah, they're a prime example. You know, it's a love-hate relationship. I know here on the West Coast, I don't deal with hail. And when I go into a body shop, I am endeared and I'm loved because I'm usually saving the painter Me from, too. from a panel, a repaint, or from something, you know, from a mistake. So... Even the body guys, they sit there and watch me. They ask me questions. I don't have issues with body men hating on me. So I don't have any body men hating me. They're always asking me, do you do training? Will right. you train me? Yeah. Will you train me? Will you train me? So it's a I little can, bit different. I can, I can add this. So I'm in a rural state. It's a poor state. We're not known for our, our wealth being generated out of our income. And for a long time, it was always, you guys are taking the work, you know, um, which can be heard in a lot of more impoverished areas of the U S and right now the shops that I am dealing with that were the worst to deal with that have had two years of tremendously horrible, horrible hail. I'm talking 60% total loss, 80% is going to the collision center because it's just not PDRable. And these guys are dragging ass right now. And they're just like burnt. Uh, and here we are. Now we're the saviors, the big saviors. Mm. And I am changing pricing like nobody's business. And the shops are learning that. Wait a second. They've been doing it too cheap. And I've been lecturing them that they were doing it too cheap. And now they're like, well, I, what, what the hell are we going to be doing? We, the insurance companies are sloughing all this off. I'm like, defend yourself with pricing. Yeah. So what's your Hudson? Houston, Texas. Um, it's a little bit of both. Honestly. Um, I get, I get the, you know, I'm the guy who comes in and, um, uh, you know, the, the prep guy or the painter or whoever forgot, you know, they forgot something like they didn't see a door ding and I come in, I fix it so they don't have to repaint the door or they accidentally slammed the door, the hood too hard after a repair. And now there's a low in it. So I come and fix that. And then I, I, I have a guy who begs me probably every time I'm, I am at a body shop, Hey, train me, train me, train me. And, and I'm just like, man, I'm sorry. That's just not going to happen. Refer them to Kiko. That's what I've been doing. Call Gene Petty. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> and then, um, and then there's guys who you know that where I'll I, I I'm known for doing hero work. I do I do uh, especially for a lot, a lot of times I do hero work. So I'm I'm fixing stuff that these body guys have never seen a dink guy fix. You know, and they were like licking their chops like, oh yeah, that's an easy repair. And then I come in like. And the, the service writers know it, that I can fix it. So they'll call me in and I'll come and fix it. And they get pissed. And really? um, yeah, yeah. They'll get pissed because that was an easy repair for them, right? It's a front fender. Well, they just swap it on and off, paint it, be done with it. Now, let me ask you, are they pissed? Or is it like, are you walking in there with like a, a little chip on your shoulder? Not a chip on your shoulder, like a little proud. Because that's that's what we're kind of going with, with this whole banter going on. Yeah, yeah. It's like, do I you go walk in there not. with the I swagger? Not, yeah, there are some dink guys out there that think they're God's gift to... to, to the Red Storm Trooper. Yeah, the Red Storm Trooper. Like, I do not have that. Like, I let... I have really good relationships with most body men. It's It's... The only time I ever have issues with body man is when they're a new body man and they just don't know me yet. Right. Yeah. But typically every body man that's in any body shop I service, I, I have gotten them out of a bind and then they appreciate me. Sure. Um, but before you have that, they, they'll, they'll kind of be really weird about you. Like, okay. Like, what do you, yeah. and they see me fix big stuff. They didn't, weren't, weren't aware it could be fixed by PDR. So they get kind of worried. And then I'm yeah. just like, look, dude. I, and like, like right now, I'm at a body shop. It's slow. And, uh, we got hit and there's a, there's a hood that I know I can fix on this land Rover. That's got hell damage. And I'm just like, you know what? I could fix this and we'd fight with insurance about pricing, or I could kick it and give some easy hours to a body guy. 
And so I'll go and I'll talk to the body guy. I go, Hey dude, you just need a couple extra hours. You know, like I can kick this hood. And he's like, yeah, that would be really helpful. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll kick the hood. I don't need to do a hero work on this. And, and I, that's the relationship I have with my body men. And then they're like, and then another thing is I'll go up to them like, Hey, do you want the R and I work? Do you want those extra hours? I can do it myself and take that. But if you want those extra hours, I'll give them to you or I can do it. What, what, what do you want? Now that's me. I'm not doing full on full blown hell storm. This is a one-off hell car. I'm, I've maybe done one hell car a week for the past couple months. Um, that's, that's exactly what I do. Hudson. We're, we're right in line with each other. And I kind of had the perspective that most think guys should be doing the same thing. I don't know if that's reality, but it, to me, it seems like it should be reality. Um, because your, your body men are your, your best salesmen, right? Yeah. You, know, you get them on your side and they're telling all their friends, they send me tons and tons of work. So you t- totally want those guys on your side. I do. I teach so many shortcuts to body guys. You don't have to teach them all PDR, but man, we're masters of metal. Yeah. You, you know what? That's a, such a good point because they are they're losing their their base or what their um, what they started off because we we became we were born out of old body men, you know. And I I walked into a shop the other day. And I'm coming into the shop and I get this perfect reflection off this panel. And this guy's trying to shrink the panel, right? And he's hitting on it. And I look at it and I can see exactly what's wrong, right? I see this big old hump, right? Like uh, like probably a foot away from where he's working. And he's struggling and he's a young guy and he doesn't know how to shrink metal. And I go up there and I go, hey, you want some help? And he goes, yeah, this thing's oil canning on me. And I go, yeah. So I take out my... 144 hammer and I'm working 12 inches away from him and I just hit on the panel like a foot away and all of a sudden it tightens the whole thing up and he's like holy moly what'd you do and he's not using his eyes you know he's using his hands yeah and he's not rubbing his hands across the the panel further out to yep. really feel that hump and he he's not using his eyes and that's the problem with these body guys and that's why we're doing you know push to paint stuff is because they forgot the skill because they're replacing panels so often you, you know up here where i'm finding the biggest change is the aluminum fords yep everybody bought the aluminum puller and everybody got convinced every body shop got convinced to spend 25 and 30,000 bucks on this aluminum puller. And then it's, they don't have all the proper alloys. You can't weld onto it. And it's doing the damage on the back. You can't get the access. What I've been teaching them is how to glue pull instead of using the stud. Same here. And now they're finding out that they don't want to grind the paint off. They want to be able to see the dent, stop fondling the panel and stop start looking at it and now they're glue pulling now i've got them buying more expensive glue from anson and they're getting better glues better tabs and now they're roughing everything out with glue and not with a stud welder yeah their hours they're getting through their hours faster their work is cleaner saving the panel the problem with the the body guys is how many times have you walked in the shop and you see them buy PDR tools, but the one tool that they don't own is a light. The light. No. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And I, I go, dude, he goes, wait, what do you think of these tools? I go, those are good, but you're missing the most important tool. What do you mean? What do you mean? What are you talking about? I go, have you ever seen me not work without a freaking light? Right. Yep. And you know, they don't I'll get that. That was a, uh, I was at a Kiko training event and I was there just to observe and really enjoy it. But I ended up kind of hopping in there. And uh, one thing that I had a, basically with the body man was like, Hey guys, you guys are all about Phil. We're all about vision. And I had to teach them yep. how to read the metal on that. And, um, and that, that's a big learning curve, reading the metal Huge. with that light. And then if you don't have the light, goodness. So, but uh, yeah, we've kind of, Got on a little bit of a tangent. Here guys with this not one. even looking down the panel right. They're looking at the panel straight on. Well, I know. They just don't know. They don't know. And that's where I think we, as guys, in a in a not in a we're better than you way, 
because there's crap they can do that I can never do. They they can do things. They have knowledge beyond what I could oh, ever. Come on, we're way better. No, nope. see nope, that that's not. the type of arrogance that we're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> we're not. We we are not better. We're just different. We're we're different. All right, we're purely cosmetic. They're saving. I mean, they're saving cars. We're saving a panel, maybe. You know, for um, yourself, Junior. <laughs> I'm, I said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize your PDR could fix frame damage. I'm exactly. Sorry. Yeah. I, I see a, uh, <laughs> oh, my friend, nobody's fixing frame damage these days. Those are ultra and, and high strength steels. You can't weld them. You can't heat them. Yeah, uh, but that's a topic for a whole another day. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well, according I, to a, a prominent leader, <laughs> one of our rants, a prominent leader in the collision industry, um, we uh, PDR guys, 98% of us are horrible and we are killing people. Well, I'll agree to the first part, but I'll argue on the second. <laughs> but I, but the, the first part does kind of depend on which event we're at and how much we've had to drink. <laughs> <laughs> really killing but, people? Please explain that one to me. So, okay. This person, I, guys, I, I, we, I, you know, decided to comment on, on one of their posts, uh, on a collision page. And we went back and forth and I decided to have a private message. I'm like, Hey, I think you have a lot to, you're talking about a lot of things that I'm kind of ignorant to. I'm on a PDR podcast. I would love to have you on to talk about these things. And immediately this person just started attacking me and say, yeah, I would love to come on your podcast and tell you how you're killing people. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa there. Look, I get it that you feel like you got to attack and fight. Like that's what you have to do. I'm just saying, I would love for you to come on the show and educate, not attack Dent guys. But I'd love for you to educate us. And she just, oh, <laughs> that person. <laughs> <He's she>? <laughs> <laughs> well, this week they might identify as a woman. Next week, next week they might identify as a man. <laughs> You never know. <laughs> We're trying to stay anonymous here. That person, right? That person decided yeah. to just keep attacking yeah. and keep and like. I'm like, look, I'm just, I'm on your same, same team, different jersey here. Like, I agree with what you're saying. I believe in these things. I want to learn more. Can you come on the podcast? And all they want to do is just attack, 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 and say how bad PDR guys was. And I'm like, okay, okay we give can. me an example of her. Her showing his. how we his okay. <laughs> so <laughs> the the <laughs> thing that started this all was one time use products yeah okay there are things on cars and like Eclipse. here's the deal is this person is nope, not wrong things. they are right yep i do not disagree with anything she's give me the example um, toyota camry you uh you go to do an upper door dent and you have to take off the belt molding do you put it so back on the belt moldings yeah that's very dangerous okay go on no and you then? take the belt molding off do you okay. put it back on the car or do you order a new one Okay, why why do what we need do you, to order a new one? What do you okay. do and what should you do? Yeah. Yeah. What what are people doing, and this is where the killing them statement comes from, is they're putting the belt only back on. According to Toyota, you throw it away. Now, what is correct? The, what is correct is what the manufacturer states. Manufacturer states throw it away, throw it away. Charge for it. Why are we throwing it away? So here's the thing. In the way airbags work now are the sensors. We've, we've spoken about these sensors, how drilling holes can affect those sensors. Well, now, if you remove, according to Toyota and their OEM statements, if you remove a belt molding, you have now affected the seal that can then recreate the air pressure inside that that sensor reads. So that means you can affect when that airbag deploys by one one hundredth of a second, and that can be the meaning of life and death, according to, to Toyota. Okay, essentially, Toyota. what you're saying is once Toyota. that car hits a certain age and the rubber deteriorates, that that car is no longer safe to drive. Okay, got it. Won't buy a Toyota. No, I'm, I'm right there with you, Daniel, uh, because that I find that with Toyotas. I find that with Hondas. We're out here in West Coast where we're blasted stupid. with heat. I can't tell you how many times just putting a window wedge in a Honda or a Toyota t tears apart the belt molding. And maybe yeah, it happens over in North Dakota or South Dakota as well. But do both of those companies say if you wedge it, you must throw it away? Right. Exactly. So, well, are you, no, you, no, but do, no, no, you didn't answer the question, Vince. Using a, uh, Hold on, I, I need to hear one person at a time. Sorry, John. What was your question? Was about the wedge? 
if we wedge yeah. it, right? No, there's no question. If you wedge it, you throw it away. That's what OEM says. That's what OE yes. operation says. And that is what this quote unquote industry leader is arguing that when we go and we repair a quarter size dent on the rear door of a Camry, we are killing people. Well, because we are affecting the sensors, the air pressure that the air that the the sensors read during a crash for the airbags. I'm you know sorry. what? If a sensor is that sensitive, there's a, a million things that could affect that. There is, and I, and I see both sides. I see both sides. But also, I would say that I honestly feel that's because of lawsuits, because of all these different things. Toyota's just constantly covering their butt so they don't get sued. But Daniel, it doesn't right. matter what you think. You're not an engineer. You do not design the car. Toyota yes. or Honda, they design the car, and they're calling the shots on what they designed that car for. And if you do not perform what they tell you, they're not liable for it. You are. That's basically yes. what they're saying. Hey, you want to fix that dent and change that and wedge open that uh, that front door and, and the belt molding and, and create an air gap? No, it doesn't go away. Uh, I understand that, but that's that's different from reality. It's oh, not, no. though. Hold on. John, it's John, not. what I'm saying. It's not. No, it, there there is no. The reality is what the OEM states, yeah. and that's what this whole argument is about. That's them covering their ass. That's them covering their ass, but that's you covering your ass because then if should something go wrong and let's say somebody blows through a stop sign, T-bones that car and the driver of that car gets killed. Because the airbag didn't go off. It, yeah. It, then it's going to come down to it doesn't matter that that other driver blew through that stop sign. The only thing that matters is you put a window wedge in. That's it. Mm -hmm. So let's and that is that is the reality of the society. Now, you know, a lot of dent guys just say it's just a door dent or it's just a hail car. But I will remind you all of this. The John Eagle lawsuit that we all know was the $40 million lawsuit was just a hail job. It was just a hail job. Okay, just let me ask you this. Okay, if, okay, this information is new to me. I've never heard this information before. Um, how am I supposed to get this information? Is, is it yeah. my responsibility to seek out this information? Yes. Yes. And that was why I contacted this person and we went on a 12 hour long back and forth conversation of, I was like, Hey, I'm here listening. I'm not going to answer all your threats and your questions that you have. I would like to have you on the podcast to explain this to our listeners. Cause I believe that we are, um, for lack of a better term, we're ignorant. We, we are not aware of these things. I would like us as dent technicians to be aware, but this person um, lacks the ability of any tact, lacks the ability to have a civil conversation or to educate in a way that doesn't require uh, basically calling people murderers. Well, Hudson, so I was like, okay. we can't have you on the show. So Hudson, it was like when I was, when I was a teenager, I went to, or not teenager, I was probably eight or nine or 10. I went to WrestleMania three with Hulk Hogan and the Junkyard Dog and uh, uh, Jimmy Superfly Snuka, right? Though they were like the biggest friggin' hype men, right? Yeah. And then you had the wrestlers that were a little bit more quiet, more debonair about it, and they went and they, you know, they slaughtered uh, people. Uh, it's kind of or like Andre the Giant, he was the king, right? <laughs> he would take down all the other guys and he wasn't like so boisterous about it uh, where I think that's where it kind of comes in is you have a person that wants to slap you in the face like John said with a brick like you're killing people well no the reality is we're not killing people but we're not doing things the way the OE correctly, the, the, the correctly. Yeah. and why are we doing that because we're trying to satisfy what the customer came in for to fix a door ding, you know? Yeah. At the end of the day, we're straightening metal. We're fixing a door ding. We're not replacing a panel. We're not, we're saving a panel. We think we're the saviors. Yeah. And that's where our ego gets in. It's like, oh, man, we're we're saving this customer so much money. We're getting the car back to them within days instead of weeks. Yeah. And all this stuff that's feeding our ego. And at the end of the day, are we doing the correct repair that the OEM or the, the original 
equipment, equipment and all that stuff. Equipment the manufacturer. The manufacturer yeah. is telling us how to do it. And, and we're, they're covering and we're, their technically ass. Technically, we're not. Technically, we're not on a lot of stuff. And there are guys yeah. that do. There are guys that do. John, yep. the man on our show. I, honestly, I think our industry is better than than the body shop industry. I, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think that's a. Uh, Hold on. I don't, one at a time. Yeah. Let me let me finish. There were yeah. one. We're getting certified in uh, electric vehicles. Um, you know, I go into body shops and I talk to them, talk to body guys about electric vehicles, how dangerous they are. I see sim, see them taking apart a Prius, and I'm like, holy crap! You guys don't have this sectioned off. You don't. And they were like, well, what do you mean, man? And I go, are you certified in electric vehicles? Yeah, I took I car. And I go, well, tell me what that means. And they don't tell me nothing. They don't know anything. Honestly, Vince, you do a freaking phenomenal job in your training. And I feel that I'm way more informed than the, the guy going to an iCar class about electric cars. Well, oddly so, enough, uh, if you're did, did, uh, not to cut you off, but did you see on uh, IMI uh, certified technicians, there's a class going on tomorrow for ASC certified for Ford. Because the Ford Mustang is coming out with electric car, right? Yeah. So now ASC and Ford, they're immediately, before they even came out with it, they have a class going on it. And I'm going to take it tomorrow. I'm supposed to get a certificate, but I'm not an ASC certified technician. So I don't think I'm going to get the certificate, but at least I'll get the education from it. Right. That's good. Go ahead, Go John. On. Okay. So I'm not going to say that we are better than the collision industry. I'm going to say there's probably just about the same percentage of the collision industry as there is in the PDR industry getting educated on this stuff. Yes. And that percentage is just very, very small in both. And that's just the reality of the situation. Um, you know, as, as, as we all discussed, you know, <clears throat> the statement was that PDR guys are killing people. The reality is, if we're killing people, the collision industry is killing 100 times because the collision industry is 100 times our size. Absolutely. And they, I, I can promise you that not every collision center is replacing those Toyota belt moldings. No. Yeah. When but I, let's take that. I, let's take. Let's take that belt molding though one step further, because uh, I've had this discussion with a lot of dent guys, and they're like, "Well, fine, then I'll just take the trim panel off." Do you know what the OEM says if you take the trim panel off? Yep. <laughs> you have to replace all of the clips uh -huh. yep. and you have to replace that inner plastic shield. If you even break the seal of that inner plastic shield. Yep. So those Hondas, like, you get all that black stuff all over you, <laughs> you know, and, and, yep. and, and if that's the case, John, uh, we also, that means anyone installing speakers has probably murdered people. Oh yeah. Anyone oh, yeah. installing alarms has murdered people oh, now. They're big murderers. We're just a whole the automotive industry is just murdering everybody around here. We're a yeah. bunch of killers. But yeah. okay, let, let's hey, ask, car let's lives ask. matter. <laughs> I'm starting a movement. Okay. How how do we Sorry, uh, give get the information out so every yes. tech knows about this? Because this is the first I've heard of it. This is gonna okay. be an ongoing, so, ongoing discussion and we're gonna be talking about it for weeks and weeks, guys. Yeah. So get ready yeah. to get your well, knowledge. We on. should have a central organization. So shop. here's the one thing I, I have a I have a shop who is crazy about OEM, right? And I and I love it. I learn a lot from them. And the the one John, you can help me with this. The one website they recommend is OEM one stop dot com. That's one and of that's them. where you can go to get all the OEM procedures. Now here's the deal. It's not no, cheap. No, it's no, not no, cheap. No. Uh, uh, wait, hold on, Hudson. In there, Hudson. Okay, yeah, 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 correct me. Yeah, back up. Okay. OEM one stop is a central hub to get to all of the OEM um, manufacturers, the websites that lead you and all of those websites, Honda, Ford, Toyota, um, they're pay sites. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you will need to pay whether you pay for a yearly subscription, a monthly subscription or a one-time daily access. Right. So now, we have to get, we have to pay for information that will save lives and help the manufacturer yeah uh, and, and this is where this is where it's hard for me where it's like okay i want to be above board i want to do things right as a technician then i do you not would... want to put anyone's safety at risk but also 
the practicality of it is if I'm I'm working on 10 different models, 10 different models of vehicles a day, I I don't think I have the funds to afford all the different no hold OEM on. procedures and not and let alone the time sure like i was talking to the guy you know i i just got done having a trip with some w- with a, a a customer of mine and we went out of town together and he was talking about you know this you know a steering column he's like we got these steering columns and the oem procedures for the steering column is 127 pages and right. i was like what he goes, yeah. And anytime an adjuster argues with me, I just print out 127 pages and I just throw it out and go, have you read this? Because I have. Okay. Now, now Hudson, <laughs> here. Here's the deal. Only yeah. a month stop is wonderful, but all data, all data is where the majority of shops go to. Uh, it's also OEM certified by most OEM companies. Uh, procedures and, and companies out there that you could go to all data and pull the data how to how to do stuff okay yep and what's what's required to be replaced and what's you know one time use and whatnot uh all data and correct me if i'm wrong because i'm still working with this uh john when i'm on uh my autel and i could actually i could access all data from my autel scanner uh but you have to have a paid subscription to do so. Yeah. So that's one other thing that if you have an Autel scanner, if you bought one from Anson or if you bought one from an, a different source, you are you are able to incorporate the OE procedures into your scanner as well to find out, you know, are you supposed to be doing this? Are you not supposed to be doing this? And how to do it. Okay. And I believe all data, um, I'm going to, pull it up here really quick, but uh, I do believe it's like a $265 a month subscription. It is. So it's two sixty five a month. And that gives you access to pretty much all makes and models. Yeah, absolutely. Now, and they okay. update all the time as well, just like the Autel scanners do. Uh, on the, on the flip side of that, if you go into your body shops and ask them, most body shops, I would say 90% of the body shops I go into have all data or all data however you want to say it. Yeah. Now, and there is another new kid on the block. Okay. Ooh. And it's ident fix. Ident fix. Yep. Is this yep. a PDR and thing or a, a no, body? No, nope. this is owned by the company that has, um, auto Solera. And it is a, uh, tech driven, uh, data information. So they're not as big as all data. They're the relatively new kid on the block. But for most of us, we're looking at all data collision is the part that we want. Now, all data has tons of wiring, mechanical, um, and ident fix is everything. Uh, you look it up by the make and model, and you're looking at technician notes from all around the world so here's a question so what you're saying is identfix is kind of like a a social media version like where if someone's taking something apart and they notice like oh this isn't noted this isn't noted in the schematic here and they can make a note on it and everyone can read it yeah and then you know obviously people are you know, maintaining it, keeping it in an orderly fashion, making yeah. it so it's possible to. And to here's hear. the deal: none of them are 100 percent solid. Here's no, the, not one, not even the OEM ones are 100 percent solid. There's times that where you could go on YouTube and find out how to do something, a procedure, how to do it. It might not be the way that the, the OE wants you to take apart that door card, but it is. It's going to get you to the same aspect or yeah. to the same end results. Just like all data or or what you said there, John. But it, it, for the guys that have taken my um, my IMI class, we've gone over some of these. We've gone over OEM One Stop Hudson. You probably forgot. That's all right. I forgive you. So there's places where you find out how to power down vehicles. There's free sites that you can find out how to power down vehicles, and there's paid sites that you can. So it's just a matter of gaining the knowledge to do it properly. Uh, and what what we found with the, the the young gentleman that was bashing you and stuff like that, because we're all killing people, is they're doing the same things. They're doing the same things in the body shops. There's not one source that they're going to. There's many sources. But yeah. 
on the flip side, you know, even you, you want to be paid for your time. You know what I mean? Daniel, exactly, if you're looking, exactly. if you're, and that's the thing, because I think where we're going to have to, where I see the future of PDR is even door dings and stuff like that are going to be an insurance claim. They're going to have to, if they're expecting us to do OE procedures to fix a door ding, you know what? And I got to replace that belt molding. The customer is not going to want to pay $125 for the quarter size dent plus the replacement of the $65 uh, belt molding. You know, it's yeah. going to become well, it's not an it's not claim. practical, you know, with with powering down a vehicle and t- getting your certification, if you're certified, you you can get paid the 150 bucks or whatever it yeah. is. You know, but in this case, I don't see a practicality with it. What I think should happen is maybe we start a, a, a new Facebook page and call it warning PDR or something like that. And we can post information like this. So we have uh, educated heads up, but we're not paying individual subscription fees for, you know, that that's well, just, I got a better well, idea. We create a universal login. All right. Yeah, we something. It, we call it the username Dent Tech password ABC one two three. Anyone can log in at any time. Right, right. Uh, there you go. As somebody who is in the software industry, yeah, that is highly noticeable. Yeah, it's highly <laughs> obvious, and it's easy to put a stop to. Uh, Hudson, <laughs> we we have thirty six hundred viewers a week on or listeners a week nation or worldwide on our podcast. I think they'll catch on to that. <laughs> Even yeah. if like a hundred of them. Jeez, Robin, thanks. Yeah, I think <laughs> the podcasting, is, or, or, I mean, the Facebook page is a better idea. But anyway, uh, something but hold like on. that. The Why? But the practicality is... is, is oh, hold it, up. But Daniel, you're, you're, wrong. you're arguing you're looking at it wrong, semantics Daniel. and you're arguing feelings. And uh, let me tell you, there's one true hard fact. And that's once you cross the threshold into a courthouse, your feelings don't Yep. Matter. I get that. Like, like, like Daniel, I sympathize. I, I, I can't agree with you because of what we have to go by OEM. Is it practical? I don't think so at all. Here's a question. Here's a question. Um, on these, on all data, does it show how to take things apart, a part of the OEM procedures? Yes. Okay. With, with so pictures. I would possibly make the argument that if you, have a retail shop and you have someone who is dedicated to R and I or taking things apart, paying the two eighty six a month should be something that you could definitely afford and definitely use and do uh, for your shop. It's hey, a tax write off hey, and it could be incredibly helpful. Let's do this because I know someone that runs a, a pretty highly skilled retail shop in Georgia, right? <laughs> and I, I let, let, uh, we, we are running out of time. Okay. So okay. Yeah. I'm getting the time. Soon. But I mean, this is but, a topic we can go yeah. on to and on to forever. Yeah. The, the major basis behind the, the statements that was being tough for Hudson to handle. It all comes down to your feelings. Don't matter the only thing that matters is the oem book and it can take you eight to ten hours to look those things up and, and that's yeah. just that and hudson yeah, stop and killing people it's it yeah it's it's bonkers like guys if we want to do things by the book you can't i would argue you can't make any money as an individual tech who is trying to push dents does this whole thing mute what? No, no, I just, I don't, to learn everything, like how much reading is required for OEM procedures on things? Here, it's not here's like that, thing. though. It's not like yeah. that. Once, once, honestly, once you f- understand, Hudson, do, have you never fixed the same car twice? Yeah, I've, I've fixed the same car multiple times. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. But I'm saying, have you only ever fixed one Toyota Camry or have you fixed 100 Toyota Camry? Yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have to look that up more than once? No, you don't. But every new year is a new model. 
Yeah, it doesn't matter though. It's especially when we're talking Toyota. Toyota can't update their stuff, but every two decades. But it, but that's my point. Is once you know it for that particular year, make model or that body style that hasn't changed, you're then aware. You know it. You're aware. But the reality of the situation is, it's not so much that us technicians need to change. It's the public's viewing of what we do needs to change. Yeah. John and Jane Q public think they should only pay 75 bucks to fix a door dent. The reality is if we follow the OEM procedures, it's a $387 door dent. Right. And that's what it should be charged. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if that's not just charged, the black it, and white of it. And, and if not charged, then it's like, okay, then the liability is, okay, you don't want me to change that belt molding and you want me to go down through the window because you don't want a hole then you're signing away the liability of I'm not responsible if your airbag go, doesn't go off and, you know. You well, the customer that they would need to bring it to you with uh, access. Uh, they would need to take the car apart. I, I think I'm going to have a conclusion here is that I'm going to have a disclaimer conclusion. for all my work orders that, that the customer will sign releasing my liability for any of this. You know, yeah. you know what I was informed of about a disclaimer? Probably a smart thing. Ooh, let me know. It's just as effective as your feelings when you cross that courtroom threshold. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. We gotta talk about that another. We're running out of yeah. time, so we gotta talk about that another day. <laughs> yeah. Disclaimer isn't gonna save your ass oh, at gosh. all. Not even in the slightest little bit. Not even close. All right, I'm sort quitting. Of. I'm done. All right. <laughs> I'm, you can't. I'm getting well, out of the business. You know yeah. what? At least I'm gonna deliver pizzas. You're you're getting close to retirement age, Daniel. Grandpa, oh, Daniel. Grandpa, so. Daniel. Grandpa Grom. <laughs> Grandpa Grom. <laughs> I run circles around all of you youngins. I can run circles around all of you. Look at this motorcycle, Dan. You guys, you guys wouldn't even be able to keep up with me. Yeah. I, 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 this pogo stick. <laughs> I just rebuilt a, my hip. My hip. I just <laughs> rebuilt a, a, a Kawasaki beautiful motorcycle so I could look at it and not ride it because I can't sweep my leg over it. <laughs> it's one of those brand new 1976 models. <laughs> Whoa. We're sorry, Grom. Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> oh, so okay, okay. Hey, to 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 end it on a more positive note, a more positive note about our our, our boy Daniel yeah. is he did send us a video of his new tiki, uh, his little tiki backyard, right? Paradise in his oh. backyard, and it is very, uh, it's envy, it's envy. Oh. Phenomenal. I, I think he it had looks the, great. Like the, you've got a new hot Disney. tub. You've got some lights. You've got everything that looks incredible. Your old hip is going to enjoy that hot tub, <laughs> right? <laughs> and and you know what? Uh, when it comes down to respecting our elders, man, Daniel's helped me a lot get my motorcycle stuff set up. And uh, I just wanted to say thanks, man, because uh, it's it's been great. My I question: awesome Why, why do I look younger than all of you guys, though? You don't. That's just a figment That's of your of the imagination. That's the filter you keep putting on there. I don't know what <laughs> yeah. kind of software you're using, but... Well, I can't say the same thing about Hudson because Hudson looks like a juvenile. <laughs> nah, that's cool. Well, and you know, uh, and it's kind of sad to say... He still can't grow facial hair. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. He's got a summer beard. Some are here, some are there, some are yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> So. At the Abe yeah. Lincoln. Yeah. Oh, what do I give to have uh, John's beard? Good night. Look at that thing. Right? It's, mar it's marvelous. Well, <laughs> John's going to be able to do Santa Claus and if he grows <laughs> a little bit more. A couple yeah. more years. That's why I started trimming it back. Well, well, I don't I don't know, know, Listen, I, I, this is my last podcast in California, guys. Holy no, crap. I'm going to be you know a Texan. Let's, let's acknowledge that. You know, you're leaving yep. California. Very sad, but you're... You're joined with many, many thousands of Californians leaving California <laughs> yeah. to invade Texas and to, uh, you know, hopefully not screw up Texas. Now, don't don't no, vote right? your crap over here. Keep your taxes in freaking California, <laughs> right? you dirtbag. Hey, listen don't to California, this. California, they're Texas. This is the craziest thing. So, Daniel, you've been to my house. Hudson's been to my house. I got, what, the tiniest little street, five houses on each side. Right yeah. now, I have five people that have left my street, including us. Like to move to Texas? Uh, no, two up to say, uh, Seattle. I don't, uh, the the people from Houston, the lesbians from Houston, they split. And uh, wait, they split like they're not together anymore? Or no, they no, they, they split. Left? They they left here and went to the valley. I think it was too oh. it was too cool down by the beach. They needed like heat. Yeah, mm, you know, it's true. Yeah, I'm by the beach, man. You go into the valley, it's it, it tack on an extra twenty degrees. I don't know. 
Yes. Anyways, enough with the lesbians. But five houses out of the ten on my street are now vacant after I leave on Monday. It's crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah. They sell that's the nuts. writing on the wall. Well, yeah. uh, we wish you a very safe move yeah. and uh, a safe journey on your way out. To I might Texas. not be on the, the podcast next week, but I will. I will uh, so edit it for you. All guys. you Texans, you know, show up on the highway when Vince rolls in, you know, with flags and and parades and all that. Yeah, and one with finger my, salutes. Yeah, the one finger salute <laughs> with my California plates, right? <laughs> Fuck you. Oh. Get the fuck out of here. Get my Dude. Oh gosh! <laughs> I was already warned. Change my plates immediately. <laughs> yeah, spin the we don't like your. Rooms. We don't like you around these parts. We don't like your kind. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, well, man. Anyways, All we're right, way over our time. So, yeah. uh, hey, what do you guys got to say? Hey, embrace Double the crazy. Oh, no, oh, that was hold on. at hey, the same hold. time. That was horrible. Okay, guys, level up your tools. Embrace the crazy. Don't do stupid stuff. And keep it shit. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the industry and tool-related news every week. Visit AnsonPDR.com for the largest selection for just about all your PDR tools, where you'll find hog glue and hog tabs. Don't forget to grab your Magnatech map, available at most PDR tool distributors. Mobile Tech RX, the app that helps you make more money.